And he's not Turkish. Okay. He's drinking cola with the polar bears, man. Am I the asshole for filing a conduct report on a coworker who had an emotional breakdown? That very much depends, I would say. On the situation. What a title. A coworker experienced a death in their immediate family the day they returned to work. At some point towards the end of the day as they were doing a task, I asked if they could try doing the task in X way instead. They exploded at me and yelled about their dead family member and how they just want to scream and cry and don't tell me what to do. I was terrified and shocked. I called our manager in to calm down, calm my coworker down, and our manager encouraged them to go home. They refused, so our manager told them if they were insistent on staying, they'd have to apologize to me. They apologized to me by apologizing for their family member dying. And again, I was shocked and so uncomfortable and disgusted. I explained to them that I'm sorry to hear about the death in the family. However, that is not my issue. And if something in their personal life is preventing them from doing their work and they believe they're allowed to speak to me in that way because of what's happening, then it's probably for the best that they go home. The coworker cut me off and, cut me off and said, like you're doing right now? I, I've said I'm sorry. That's it. Done. I'm not having a conversation about it. I ended up filing a conduct report on this person. Edit. We work with children under four? Oh. Oh, okay. Like in a daycare or something. Because I thought that this was like a, like a cigar rolling factory in like the, in the 1700s. I was picturing like a bunch of people on the line and like every third person was a kid under the age of four or something. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Why would you think that? I don't know. I mean, it depends on the definition of work with, right? Like I'd anchored to the idea that we're talking about coworkers. Then when they say work with, in my head, I'm thinking like, you know, I work with you know, this guy who had an emotional breakdown and also children under the age of four. Um, anyway, I, this one's, it, I hate to say it, for me, this one's too cut and dry. Your friend is not like, or your coworker, I should say, is in the wrong, no question about that. And like, you know, I hate to say it, it's, it's always easier as like a rational uh, observer with no emotion tied up on the outside it's understandable that they blew up if they're not ready to be back at work. Um, but then to have a little bit of time to cool off and then still be like, instead of being like, sorry, I'm just upset right now because of stuff going on in my personal life. Instead being like, nah, man, like, frick you, dickhead. I think that makes, like, they've doubled down on it. You can totally understand why. Um, they would be rude. I don't, dude, honestly, like, I don't, I don't think OP is the asshole. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> sure, okay, that, look, a con, adding a conduct report on the end is probably too much. That, like, I, I don't know what the hell that means. I guess it means that it gets looked at by HR or something, and then they get, possibly reprimanded or, or written up or something. Um, so to like, if I would like to think that if it happened to me, I would be like, you know, let's let this simmer for 24 hours. And then I completely understand why you're upset. Let's hash this out. I know it's not about us. That being said, I also, I mean, I don't feel like OP's being too much of a dickhead in this situation. Can I say it also depends on, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> also depends on what they backseated as, as somebody who gets backseated on occasion. If they were, you know, like doing something unsafe and they were like, hey, can you do it like this instead? That's fine. If they were like, hey, don't tie the kid's shoes like that. Use the bunny ear method instead. I might be like, you know what? Listen up, you little shit. I had a hard week, okay? I know how to tie my shoes. Do I, I'm not stupid. I'm smarter than you are. You're going to try to back... So, oh, hey, hey, have you considered... Hey, you ever thought about doing it this way? Yeah, okay? Yeah, I thought about it, and I decided uh, that's not my problem, okay? Anyway. 
I make four times what you make. Well, you wouldn't know it from your suit. You ruined my life. Anyway, I mean, this is that's just sad. Coworker probably shouldn't be back at work, but had to be back at work for economic reasons. Um, nobody sucks here. Everybody sucks here. I don't know. Just it's just not fun. Come on, stop posting real stuff, man. Start start posting the funny stuff. I don't know one. I don't know the 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 terms of service on not safe for work text. So. Am I the a-hole for kicking my friend out of my party after she had blank, blank, blank in the bathroom? Maybe we'll skip that one down here, but... Am I the asshole for telling the professor that I am in fact a customer and have the right to expect good service? Okay, here... I don't know, but what I am going to say is... I am, comma, in fact, comma, a customer and do have the right to expect, and I quote, good service. That is just the way that that's phrased as like a shower thought comeback. It has primed me in the direction of being like, you might be, okay? But let's see. <clears throat> I-20F have one professor in particular who pretty much no one likes. Students can't stand him. He has terrible student reviews on Rate My Professor and other platforms. But I had to take his class if I want to graduate with honors in my chosen degree program. Okay? So far, so, so sane. He's a very archaic professor. His teaching methods are highly outdated. One thing he does is curve grades, which is when you artificially lower the grades of people who earned A's or B's to B's, C's, and D's just to make it so only a few students are allowed to succeed, even if others learn, earned a higher grade. Okay, so here's my thought on curving. You cannot curve down. You can only curve up. Curving down is like a war crime. If somebody got a 95 on your exam because you didn't make it hard enough, and then that makes you upset, you don't get to be like, well, somebody got a 100, so I'm going to take you, know, you down to like an 80 instead, okay? Curving down is, is nasty. I feel like it's one of those things, and, and admittedly, like I don't work in stats, but like... What if you just had a, 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 a cohort of classmates who are smarter than the year that came before? Like, you know, the law of large numbers, if you had a class of 100,000 people every year, it, the, the dissimilarity should even out. But if you got a class of like 50 people, you could easily have like, you know, five idiots or six idiots in the class one year and the next year you know, half of those idiots get replaced with geniuses and all of a sudden, like, you know, why, why are you normalizing everybody into that situation? So you're, w within a class, you're like, okay, I got a 56 because I was like the 11th uh, worst in my class or something like that. But your 56, you might have gotten an 80 on the exam, whereas last year, somebody who got a 56 got a, a 20 on the exam and got cranked up. Anyway, so I, this is, look, I just don't, I don't, I don't respect the, the curve down. A curve up is generous. If they do it, I think that's nice. A curve down is, the way I look at the curving down is like your, your professor fucked up if they made it too easy. You don't get to punish other people by like possibly, you know, lowering them under the requirements for their scholarship or something like that just because of the fact that you made it too easy and you're upset. Anyway, that's just my thought on that, okay? Curving down should only be allowed at the urinal. But dum bum tsh. Anyway, that's that's good. That's good. I like that. It's a good joke. I was gonna make a joke. Which is, I don't even have enough to curve, but now I just, uh, now I just feel bad. <laughs> time, to, time to drink some blue juice. <laughs> Cheers. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, just so he can brag and say, my class is so hard. Our college's administration 
is very critical of the practice of curving and asks professors not to do so, it's considered even more ridiculous when the class isn't a STEM class. The administration allows students to file a request with the grading board if they've been graded unfairly by professors to resolve the issues in grading. My professor graded me completely unfairly on a recent assignment. First, he gave everyone in the class the answer to a particular question on the assignment, which he designed incorrectly. So he was just giving them points due to his mistake. I wasn't in class because I had a cough. And even though it wasn't corona, the administration makes us quarantine if we show symptoms. He never told me the, about the answer he gave to everyone. Okay. That happens. Like... Like, I know how that sounds, but yeah, sometimes you're, you're sick on a day where nothing gets taught, and sometimes you're sick on a day where they introduce, like, the most important mechanic of all time. So on the assignment, I, I told you in third grade, I missed, like, three days of class, and as a result, even to this day, I have no knowledge of grammar. I know what a subject is in a sentence. I don't know what a predicate is. I'm going to assume it's everything but the subject. I don't know what an adverb is. I don't know what... Uh, I only, in the last decade, I've only found out what pronouns were. You know, it's been a long road for me to approach some level of, of competency with respect to grammar. You taught English? I know! But, like, it's, you, I was teaching English as a second language in, you know, second, in uh, South Korea. You're not going, like, uh, you know, this is an adverb. You're going, like, the apple is red for, like, all day, every day. You know, hello, Jenny, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. Hello, Sally, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. Hello, Sarah, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. It's just that hours and hours every day. If one of the kids was like, what the heck is a, is a predicate? I would be like, how about we just focus on learning what the yellow fruit is? And then we'll talk about predicates when we, when we get there. Anyway. <laughs> So on this assignment, I was unfairly docked several points because he didn't tell me the answer he gave away from the whole class because I was forced to miss class due to quarantine. I'm getting mired in the weeds, I'll admit. That's your problem. That, that, I was on your side up to this point for sure. That is not the professor's problem. It's not his responsibility to make sure that if you miss the class that you're caught up. He's got other things to do. Everything else I get, Okay. The administration would consider this an unequal playing field. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Shut up. The administration would consider this an unequal playing field. All students are supposed to have an equal chance of scoring well in the assignments. Unfortunately, none of my classmates will talk to me and give me their notes because I uh, speak to them in a patronizing fashion. Um... Missing these points lowered my grade to the borderline between A and B. And then the professor... So, so wait, just a thought here. What about the other questions you got wrong? So you were on the borderline. Presumably you got more than one question wrong. The question that you couldn't possibly have gotten right because you missed the day where he gave you the answer. Uh, all the other ones, though, hey, hey, man, those ones, what are you supposed to do? You just, sometimes you get them right, sometimes you get them wrong. But I deserve to get that one that I got wrong right. Missing those points lowered my borderline, so my grade was artificially lowered to a B so that he can brag about how only X people got A's on the recent assignment. The whole situation was unfair from start to finish. I never even had a fair chance to do well. I argued heatedly with him about it, and he said, nah. I argued heatedly with him about it, and then he had the audacity, audacity to nastily say to me, youth these days, you all think the customer is always right, but you aren't customers and don't have the right to a certain level of service. To which I corrected him. Actually, I am by definition a customer. I don't pay 80000 a year to be cheated out of the grade I rightfully earned by, first of all, 80K, like... Let's be realistic. You're not paying 80K. Maybe your parents are paying 80K. More realistically, Fannie Mae is paying 80K a year. You're probably going to end up paying like 130, 140K a year by the time it's over, okay? So like, let, as long as we're being highly specific, let's just make sure everything is absolutely on the table here. Um, 
I've already decided I'm never asking this guy for a recommendation for anything. So I have nothing to lose at this point. I'm escalating to the grading board to have them review what happened so I can salvage my grade. Am I the asshole? Um, it was not in the notes. He verbally gave a freebie to the class, and he is expected per university rules to tell quarantine students if they miss something crucial and it's not in the notes. There's no situation in which I could have known about the freebie. Like, I'm just, look, okay? I feel bad because, like, I do think she's the asshole. And I think the professor's the asshole, too, but I'm like... You kind of just, like, you got to be, okay? Like, obviously, like, here's the thing. Is it possible that this B screws up the whole trajectory for her life? No, but it's possible that she does believe that. I believe if there were huge consequences for the, the B, she would have put them in the post because she put a lot of details in here that made her case look as flattering to her as possible like for example i had a cough it wasn't corona but i would i would have gone to class with my cough and gotten everybody else sick um except the university dickheads wouldn't allow me as a result i missed the professor giving out an answer and there was no way conceivably for me to possibly get to the point where i could have gotten it no one will tell me that because they've all kind of academically blacklisted me um because i talked to them like they're stupid um long story short like i don't i mean can I, can I be honest with you? I actually think... I, I kind of don't think she has a leg to stand on. And I understand that might make me... That might make me the asshole on top of the situation. I feel like if you miss the class... And then you get something wrong on the exam... Because you miss the class... It's your responsibility. That's that's all like like I I don't really have anything else to say about it. Like like I can understand her frustration. You know, you miss a big day and then you you're you know, you feel punitively punished as a result. However, at the same time, it's like if you get sick, you miss a class, you talk to your classmates, you go like, "Hey, what did I miss?" You know, you, you take their notes and copy them down yourself, et cetera, et cetera. The curve down is stupid. That's like 100%. I, I'm not on the teacher's side when it comes to that. I just don't know like what the professor is supposed to do. They're like supposed to individually email all of the students that are sick, you know, for one reason or another and be like, hey, by the way, just so you know, 35 minutes into my 55-minute lecture, I said that the answer to question 16A was like, you know, this. I, just, I mean, I don't, I don't... That's his job? Well, you know. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a boomer take. I don't think your job as a professor is to... You know, in, in an undergraduate lecture, email everybody who is not there on a given day and make sure they're all on the same page. You can all be on the same page by either attending class or if you're not able to attend class, then you get the notes from your classmates, you know, like you distribute the load out there. I don't see it as his job at all to make sure all the students are on the same page. I see that as the student's responsibility. Youth these days, you're so convinced that the customer's always right. I can't even read chat, it's going off so much. You're ignoring a lot of context? I don't know, what context am I ignoring? The curving down, I'll admit. That, at worst, it's everybody sucks here. Because the professor is definitely an asshole. I also think that OP is, like, really whiny. The context is we're in a pandemic. 
obviously, but that, you know, that doesn't mean that the professor's job is to make sure that everybody who is quarantined also gets all the notes. Why can't the students get the notes from the people that were in the class? Can you just email your classmate and be like, hey, did I miss anything in the lecture today? At which point your classmate goes, yeah, he gave out the answer to question 16 that's going to be on the exam. We have a different, I mean, admittedly, I didn't go to college during quarantine. We have a different mindset, or I have a different mindset than Chad, that's all I'm saying. I feel like the professor's job is research, and then secondarily, it's to present the same 35 lecture slides uh, over and over again to incoming class of freshmen, and then distribute the marking to all the TAs. That's basically it. I don't, I don't think they have a... I, at least when I, when I went to school, and admittedly, I didn't go to school during COVID, even though when I went to night school and stuff like that, when students missed a class, it was always their responsibility to make up the difference. I don't, need, I don't think she's a bad student. I think she's just like... I think she's just a little high strung. Read the edit. Yeah, okay, like, look, you read the edit. It, at, per university rules, what does she know? <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I'm bringing a lot of my own bias into this, but I'm like, I don't think that she necessarily knows that. that and admittedly, I'm going against what's written on the page. But there's a part of me that's like, you know, nobody reads those. I'm just like, look, I think that the professor should not be curving down. I, I, I accept her premise that the professor is a bad professor, is hated, etc., etc. I've had it before many times. I just, I take issue with her deflecting responsibility at every turn. That, I guess that's where it comes down to me. Like, the whole thing is just steeped in, I never had a chance, hey, we we're the university says everybody's supposed to be on an even playing field, and yet I was uniquely discriminated against because I had a cough that wasn't COVID, and there was no, he gave away an answer during the lecture, and as a, I couldn't be at the lecture, there was no way for me to, there were no means for me to actually get that answer for myself, like, it's, it's, it, 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 look, if she's right in principle, then, then she's right in practice, I guess, as well. But there is, like, I, I think it's an everybody sucks here. But she doesn't suck for the way that she talked to the professor. I just think she sucks for being, like, a little bit too, just, just a little bit too obsessed with going from B to A. That's it. Now, her being annoying doesn't actually make her, like, an asshole. But it, it does kind of make me less likely to be 100% on her side. I don't know. Look, I've had bad professors as well, all right? But I also, I, I find myself, um, you know, putting myself in, in the professor's shoes, right? Just just not to give him too much sympathy, but I'm like, you know, 50th time teaching the class. You know, he's got a lot on his plate. Not that the students don't as well. And then, like, he's, you know, this one person is soaking up, like, more attention than the rest of the class combined. And I can see, to some extent, why he might be like, man, I wish this girl would shut the hell up. <laughs> I can understand. I, I'm building my own headcanon, okay? You're not wrong. I'm building my own headcanon. But I'm just saying, I could, I could totally see. Because I've had night classes as well, where I was like, you know, 
the professor occasionally like gets into it with a couple of students. And at the end of the year, you know, there's 40 kids in the class. You know, when one of them puts up their hand and they start asking some inane question that's never come up in reality, you and a couple of the other people in the class just look at each other and go like, here we go again. Technically, um, I said that, uh, that this data type was a long, long on the quiz and I got it right, but then it turns out that the right answer was long, but would I still have been right? Like, is it something where like all longs are also long longs or is it something more like all long longs are longs? And I'm just asking just in case like at some point in the future, like maybe when I work at Microsoft, like during my interview, I might have a question uh, like this, and I'm totally going to remember this. I'm going to lock it away in my memory palace. Um, so I just want to know, like, when I get asked at the interview, is a long, long a long? Or is, like, a long, long just a different kind of, uh, is it a different data type together? Or is it a double? Or is it, and you're like, man, we only got an hour here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to end up going late just because you like the sound of your own voice. Oh, look at this cutie baby. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hey, baby. Where's your nose? Oh. <laughs> Kobe. Hey. Holy crap, she did it. <laughs> your eyes. Eyes? Eyes? A little ambitious, I think. But. Eyes? I was going, I was teaching her eyes today. Eyes. Eyes. Where's your ear? <laughs> only, only I can pick my nose on stream, honey. <laughs> Hi. Did you like your new, new glasses? I had to, I had to just put my picture up for like, 20 minutes to just burn out all the new glasses, new glasses, new glasses, new glasses, new glasses. They'll, they'll get used to it. They, they don't like it? It's not that they don't like it. It's just that, have you ever seen like the way that they, the internet reacts to like a, uh, a YouTube layout change or a Twitter layout change or like a font change on Reddit? Like it takes, oh. it takes 10 years for people to be like, oh, actually it just looks normal now. Ryan's face changed. <laughs> Gay. Gay. Sheesh. Sheesh. She wanted to see Dada. Okay. Dada. 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 Okay. You're like, Dada. 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 Da da da. Bye bye. You wanna say bye bye? Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> there he goes. <clears throat> oh, and now oh, Tomo would like to come out too. Ah, it's all right. In like five seconds, they'll start beating the door down to get back in. No, I'm not worried about, um, I mean, I, can I be honest? I kind of, I, I love being in the why are you booing me, I'm right situation. I'm not courting the controversy of calling this lady a butthole just to court the controversy. I'm just being, I'm just giving you my honest opinion, which is why I kind of like, uh, I, I find it enjoyable. Otherwise, you could just make up like the, the consensus opinion, you know? How dare that jerk professor who probably, you know, his, his wife's probably cheating on him. How dare he be so rude to this? She had no chance to get the answer right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's not the way that I want to... <laughs> it's not the way that I want to uh, approach this. I mean, like, I'm, here's the thing. I'm, like, I'm very laissez-faire as a student, okay? I worked hard, at least at the stuff that I cared about, but... You know, whenever somebody was like, my entire self-worth is wrapped up in never getting a B ever, and then they soak up, you know, 50 people's time with their own petty squabble with the professor, I'm like, fuck both of you, honestly. Like, just grow up. <laughs> so 
Some of us are just trying to get out of the lecture, get a head start on the project and invest our time in a way that it's like most uh, appropriate and efficient rather than like have to watch these two like supposed adults, you know, put their egos on the line for something that's irrelevant for everybody else. Anyway, so we're just going to scroll past the one that might be TOS. How about this one? Uh, am I the asshole for telling my wife she doesn't look good in her favorite dress? Seems like the answer is yes. <laughs> I, male 42, and my wife, F39, were trying on some clothes the other day to go out. We both gained some weight since the pandemic, since we stopped going to the gym, but are starting up again. My wife tried on her old favorite dress, which is tight, and since she gained weight, it just doesn't look as good. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything at first, okay? But then when she asked, I told her, honestly, I don't think it looks as good as it used to. I like your black one more because it's slimming. She got mad at me and started yelling. I told her, sorry if your feelings are hurt. What, are you stupid? Like, are you just a dumb idiot? What's wrong with you? Why would you even post this? You're dumb. Like, I, <laughs> it's, you're 42 years old, man. Come on. Like, it, it's, it is. It's a literal sitcom moment, okay? I don't know what you... I don't even want to look at the comments because I've, I've seen Everybody Loves Raymond. I know how the situation plays out. But, like, I just don't understand. Yeah, you're the asshole. I mean, especially if you're, you're insecure, you're going to the gym, you both, you know, you put on weight during the pandemic, none of that makes you the asshole. But when she's like, do I look good, on, good in the dress? I mean, look, maybe this is naive, but I'm like, she's your wife, for one. She, if you're her husband, she probably looks good in the dress in your eyes to begin with. I don't even think you need to lie. You know, I think you just... Even if you're like, oh, you know, she's gained weight, you just go like, yeah, you still look great. I, I, maybe the black dress looks better, but like, I, I just don't understand. Like you actually, here's the thing. I bet he thinks she still looks good in the red dress, but he's just, he's too smart to realize he's dumb, I guess is what I'm trying to say. He probably thought, you know, what would be nice is I'll just, I'll tell her that the black dress looks better because it's slimming. And then she'll be really happy because, you know, she'll be like, oh, I like the black dress too. That's not very smart. You can't be honest. You can be honest without being an ass. Yes, correct. You're the asshole. You knew you were mean. Stop playing dumb. Dude, this gentle, you're the asshole. Sure, okay. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. Honestly, as a large female myself, I don't think you're the a-hole. She should have calmly taken your opinion. As you had clarified, it was your honest opinion. And she should have been happy you didn't just say what she wanted to hear. Yeah, okay. Um, I always... I, as long as it's someone's honest opinion, you can't get mad. That's, I think, how human beings work. She should have just rationally dissected your opinion and said, well, as long as you're being honest, no worries. Going against the grain here and saying, I am not, and saying not an asshole. I get so tired of this trope that men have to lie to us if we ask them how we look in something. If a person doesn't want to know the answer to a question, don't ask the question. Oh, come on. Mm. Husband bought 9,000, wife bought 9,000, logging on. Your thermodynamic needs have been oversupplied recently. Yes, thank you. They just, you're just people. I don't know, like, yeah, you like, I mean, just be realistic. Like, you lie to people like a hundred times a day. 99% of those lies are lies that you make from a noble position of being a good person and being like, you know, hey, what you just said was really funny. When in your head, you're like, it was okay. You know, you just, you, you know, I don't, I don't think it is a little high. I think that's a pretty realistic number. I don't think your lies are like, I was at the grocery store, but actually you were at like the number five orange, you know? I, I think it's just, uh, 
you know, it's it's the it's the way of human communication is that you know you you lie to flatter people, you you misrepresent things to make the conversation flow more freely. Like absolutely. What you just said was really funny. See, and then I could be like, you're lying. But in my head, I'm like, I would even, it's, it's cypher in the matrix, right? Even though I know this steak isn't real. Even though I know the matrix is just telling me that it's delicious. Ignorance is bliss. When people are writing plus two and lol, lamau, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I know that when they're at their computer, they're actually just like, lol, lol, plus two, plus two, lol, right? I know they're not at, sitting at the computer going, ha, 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 most of the time. But uh, I choose to believe. When I see the lulls, I imagine a stadium of, of laughter in front of me. And what can I say? Joey Pantoliano was right. Ignorance is bliss. Anyway, well, here's what I will say, okay? I think it depends on the couple. Yeah, I think you know each other, right? Like, Kate is honest with me a lot. Sometimes she'll be like, those pants don't really look like they fit anymore. And I'm like, not offended. That's because nobody can damage me with their words as much as I can damage myself with my internal monologue. So, like, I do appreciate that honesty. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go up a size next time. <laughs> but for most people, you, you kind of feel it out, right? Especially, like, if somebody go, comes up to you and goes, like, hey, are you, like, hey, do you like this new purse that I bought? You don't go, like, I don't really understand it. You know, you just go, wow, it looks super cool. I don't know. The guy in the Matrix saying that about the steak was a villain? You and I get a different read from the Matrix. My reading of the Matrix is that capitalism is the only villain. All the individuals were merely products of the machine through which they operated. I can understand if you only got a base level reading of the Matrix, ooh, bald guy bad, bald guy bad. He unplugged uh, whatever their names are. I don't even remember. He unplugged glitch. He unplugged glitch. Bald guy bad. I'm like, nah, man, society bad. Society bad. Just call me Grimes. Am I the asshole for making my teenage daughter's bedtime hours sweet my work schedule? Am I the asshole for making my teenager daughter's bedtime hours sweet my work schedule? Am I, am, am I the asshole for making my teenage daughter's bedtime hours suit my work schedule? This depends. Would it suit your work schedule if she slept from 11 p.m. until 8 a.m.? Or does it only suit your work schedule if she sleeps from like 11 a.m. until 7 p.m.? Because that's, uh, I think that'll change things slightly. <clears throat> oh my God, dude, this is too long. This is too damn long. This is too damn long, dude. Let's read it. <clears throat> My 17-year-old... Okay, hold on. Up, let's do the update later. This is not Rashomon, okay? My 17-year-old teenager and I have frequent arguments about bedtime when it is not a school night. She will stay up until 3 a.m. in the morning playing video games on a school night until midnight. That is actually when... As, as a child, well, as a late teenager, as 17... Um, that was about my schedule. I go to bed around midnight on a, on a weekday, maybe 2 a.m. on the weekends. This seems fine. Well, I understand it's an important way for her to connect to her friends. We also live in a very small place. Her playing video games and chatting keeps me up at night when I have to wake up at 6 a.m. for work each morning. That's also fair if you're doing like VoIP or something like that. That's, that, would, that would annoy me as well. Fair enough. We have a one-bedroom basement suite, and my bedroom is in the living room. There is only a pocket door between where I need to sleep and where she's in the, living, or the bedroom playing online with her friends. I'm afraid we will disturb the other tenants that live next door or the landlord upstairs, which increases my anxiety as well. 
Tonight I got up rather than lying in bed and sat in her bedroom just so she can tell how long she is actually keeping me awake. She stayed playing her games for another hour from 2 to 3 a.m. and just told me to take sleeping pills if I can't handle it. Okay, that's a dick move, but she is also 17. So, not a surprise. <laughs> Straight up, okay. Um, let's, let's continue. There's a lot to work with here. She does nearly no chores, and she, by, by the way, okay, like, I, this is parent splaining, okay? When you are complaining about the behavior of your child, I'm not saying you have complete one-to-one -one control over what your child does, but the complaints you have about your child reflect on you as well as the child. So when you're like, oh, my bitch daughter doesn't do any chores, I'm like, well... You know, how did that happen? Like, did if you wanted her to do chores, did you start putting that groundwork in when she was like six years old to get her, like, give her like responsibility bit by bit? Or did you just treat her like a roommate and you're like, now she's 17, she's not doing any chores and that's upsetting. Anyway, she does nearly no chores, has few responsibilities. She doesn't leave her room on the weekends until noon. She attends school regularly, earns average grades, does all her homework, but no additional studying or prep. Okay, so she's a person. Uh, in my daughter's opinion, I'm an a-hole and a B uh, TCH. She has trouble making friends at school. I should be supporting her spending time with her friends when they are available. They mostly graduated in the last two years and they work until midnight. She feels like my bedtimes of 12 a.m. on weekends or holidays is unreasonable. This is, am I the, am I the dick for saying this doesn't seem that bad? Like, can't you just find a resolution where, like, at midnight she turns off VoIP or something like that? Like, you can still play the games. As, I, don't, I, I feel like she shouldn't, as long as her 17-year-old goes to school and doesn't, you know, like, drop out, then I feel like she should be, her bedtime shouldn't matter. She seems normal as long as, you know, she's, she's not disturbing you. The problem is not really her bedtime. It's that she's just like, you know, she's just being loud on the VoIP, which I understand. To answer a few, anyway, to answer a few more questions. My daughter did do chores for much of her life. She had a really rough time of it last year as she came out as trans and even stopped schooling for a few months as she felt uncomfortable being there, but we worked through that. This is when chores and such went by the wayside as my bottom line was school attendance and all work at school being completed. She has learning challenges as well, so she may never attain more than average grades, but she should be achieving more with dedicated study. She may never get more than average grades, but she could be doing better than average grades. Okay. I mean, I, I understand, like, all, all of the context, okay? She does use headphones when chatting with her friends, so it's not their discussion, but her excited chatter when she's playing. This all makes perfect sense. Can she not just, like, be quiet after midnight? That's what just... Like, why she can even be on the VoIP, but she just can't say anything, like... Or she, maybe she could, like, whisper or something like that. At least... Excited chatter? I mean, I'm just like... I mean, we went through the same thing. Like, my... Uh, me and my parents went through the same thing. Obviously, the context was not the same. But, like... I, summer vacations, I would stay up until, like, 2 a.m. playing Halo 2 uh, on, on Xbox Live. And then, like, my parents would be like, hey, can you not be so loud? And I would be like, okay, sorry. <laughs> and then we, we just made it work, okay? That would, I, I, we didn't live in a one-bedroom house, to be fair, but, you know, it's, I, I feel like if you can't sleep because of clickety-clack on the controller, you can adjust to that. That's something that just, it, event, for most people, I think it, like, falls into... The, the din of ambient noise. People inconsistently talking, shouting, laughing. You can't really like turn off your brain and not interpret what they're saying. Like that stuff I understand completely. But um, 
Also, I'm not poor. I'm a single mom. I actually have a graduate degree and earn a good salary, but I'm not willing to spend more on, my, on rent as we live in a high cost of living city. Oh, oh, sure. Okay. Like that's, I understand. That's all fine. I don't think OP is the asshole in the slightest here. I think it's very reasonable to be annoyed by your daughter's voice communication after midnight. Um, let, let's read the update up here. It was a good wake-up call to me. I shared your responses with my daughter. I'm sure that was nice. Hey, honey, I, I posted on Reddit and thousands of people have weighed in on the situation with a limited amount of context to help us come up with a resolution. Um, she knows that as long as she respects quiet time rules, then Wi-Fi won't be unplugged. If she doesn't, then it is. She also agreed there's no reason for her to complete... There's no reason for her not to complete her chores, I'm assuming. Oh, that's a great update, man. There's nothing wrong with it. So the whole... Oh, like, I'm not trying to be upset, okay? But the whole thing was basically like, I told her she can go to bed whenever she wants as long as she's quiet. And she said, okay, the end. Like, uh, Okay. I didn't, I didn't need to know this much about your family <laughs> up to this point. I just... Anyway. Hey, honey, I, we took our quarrel to Reddit and decided that the best... Well, we've decided that uh, you and I are going to get a divorce. And uh, also, you're malevolent. Plus, Santa wasn't Turkish anyway. He was probably Lycian, but it seems like the jury's still out to some extent. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to get her name, my name tattooed on her? No? My wife and I have been together since we were 16, married for five years. We have one son. She dared me to get her name tattooed on myself. I did it. Okay, not the asshole. <laughs> I recently told her she should get my name tattooed on her, so I don't feel like such an idiot. She said she's against tattoos and that I'm abusing her by expecting her to ink herself up. So she doesn't want to, whatever, but I guess she, she told someone who then told our entire family that I was pressuring her to do things she wasn't comfortable with, and her stepdad wanted to have a chat with me. I dislike her stepdad. That guy is the worst. But the guy literally took it upon himself to stand up at dinner and express his concern. Started subtly hinting at me, trying to control his pride and joy. I told him to go to hell, and now I'm the bad guy. What the hell is... Some people are too stupid to be uh alive i want to be clear i'm not saying that they should die i'm more just like surprised that they made it far enough to for their juvenile brain to get into this situation as an adult <laughs> i guess is what i'm trying to say um like Okay, we've been together since we were 16, married for five years. We have one son. Great story so far. She dared me to get her name tattooed on myself. I did it. You're stupid. I recently told her she should get my name tattooed on her so I don't feel like such an idiot. Just throwing it out there if you didn't want to feel like such an idiot. You shouldn't have gotten a tattoo in the first place until you had some kind of like mutually assured destruction set up in advance or like maybe you could go into the tattoo parlor at the same time and get it done or something like that. Like, this seems like a situation where you're... Like, I, look, she's the Joker based on this. I don't know what she's doing. But he doesn't get... He's too stupid to be mad. I know how it sounds. Like, it sounds like I'm being a dickhead. But, like, if Kate was like, get your name tattooed on me. And then I was like, I came home with, like, Kate tattooed on my butt cheek or something. And I was like, okay, your turn. And she was like, are you crazy? No. I would be like, all right, I'll take the L on that one. You got me. I really should not have done that. I don't know what came over me. Fair enough. Well played. What, to the victor go the spoils. But you know what I would do? After that, I would go back to the tattoo parlor. I would just get them to change it to Skate 4. And then people would be like, they wouldn't ask any questions. They would be like, that's a great tattoo. <laughs> but if your wife's name is like Esmeralda or something, then you got some problems. I don't know how they're going to change that. Maybe they could just be a big fan of like the Hunchback of Notre Dame or something like that. But anyway, um... 
I just like I I <laughs> honestly it sounds like you're dumb and your wife is uh insane. She's like a, a Batman villain. And you like are are you okay? OP, I guess is what I'm asked. Cause it kind of seems like this is one of those preambles where like later, you know, you go over for Thanksgiving and they're like, we have this game we always play. And then the game is like hide and seek, but then it ends up with them having like weapons and you're like crawling through like the walls of their mansion and stuff like that, trying to escape like that. It, this feels like it is a situation where you thought your wife was your ally, but actually she has a closer bond with her family uh, that she grew up with, with than anybody else. Um, because they're all in this weird cult and then you're just kind of like the newest like at some point you're gonna go over for thanksgiving and you're gonna be like who's that and she'll be like oh that was my ex-boyfriend and he's gonna have like a mustache or something like that and then later you're gonna be in the basement and you're gonna see a skeleton with a mustache and you're gonna be like oh fuck it's gonna be a something like like i'm just concerned a great big bushy beard <laughs> I'm just concerned about you in this situation. But why would you get... Uh, all, is, is there not like a Hippocratic Oath for um, tattoo artists? There's no... They don't have to like make sure you're of sound mind. I know that they, like, they're supposed to make sure you're like sober or something, but... I don't know how much that actually happens in practice because I've never gotten a tattoo. Like, there's a... Good shops will make sure you're sober. This is an honest question, though. Like, if I went into a reputable tattoo shop and I, I said, I want you to tattoo, like, a realistic phallus on my cheek. And then they were like, what do you do for work? And I would be like, I'm the mayor. A reputable tattoo parlor would still be like, all right, what the, whatever the customer <laughs> wants, the customer gets. I guess they don't have a leg to stand on to say no, but I'm like, you know what they should do? All tattoo parlors should have like ombudsmen. Like, like two people have to turn a key at the same time to open up the vault that holds the tattoo gun. And before you get tattooed, you have to go, here's the tattoo I want. Here's why I want it. And then two, a jury of your peers have to be like, that seems acceptable. And I, I think that would eliminate, it would probably cause some false positive situations. Don't get me wrong, where like you really want a tattoo, but it's very hard to get people to agree to it. It is your, is your right as an adult to have that kind of freedom, I suppose. But I also feel like it would help. I'm not blaming the tattoo artist, okay? I'm just surprised that nobody more juvenile than me has ever been like, you know, we need to stop these tattoo artists from tattooing the dumb shit that we came up with on our bodies with our consent. I would have thought that at some point somebody would have gotten something idiotic tattooed on them and then been like, I'm going to spend the rest of my life lobbying the tattoo industry so that this never happens again. What's next? A license to get tattooed by my own toaster? All right, let me just... Not the asshole, but I'm also petty enough that I would get something tattooed over her name, so maybe you shouldn't listen to me. I mean, like, you should at this point. Like, she's the Joker. You should get the tattoo messed up. Absolutely. This, I mean, I, I think you would be silly if you didn't at this point. Comment deleted by user. Okay, well, thanks for your help. Everybody sucks here. Never get a tattoo of a name unless it's your child. Okay, yeah, I mean... I see your point, but after she refused the tattoo, I would have suggested a cover-up of your tattoo with her name after she requested. Name tattoos are a horrible... Everybody knows nobody's... What, what about the part 
where she is like, you're trying to control what I'm doing with my body. And then she got her stepdad involved. Like, this is nasty, man. Like, it's not about... Everybody, you don't have to be like a genius to realize you shouldn't get someone's name tattooed on you. Especially not without like a, a tit for tat kind of solution there. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. I want to read more comments, but I also have to go to the bathroom. So I think that's going to do it for React Court today. We got some good stuff. I, I, love, a, uh, I love a React Court where I was in the minority for, for one of the uh, episodes as well. That's, then later this week, I go to YouTube. And I'm like, why does that have a 92% like dislike ratio instead of 98.7? And I'm like, oh, that's the one where I called that 19-year-old college student a bitch. My mistake. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, um, React Court... Two 